We reached the forest edge faster than I expected. It's probably because I had Ilya's guidance. <laughs> that was a sudden music shift. What? The car I arrived in is gone. That's the worst transition I think this game has had. We started walking to town, stopped a car, and got a lift. You just got a random car? I think they like stopped like a, they like flagged down a car. No. That's still you ever picked up a hitchhiker before? No. Uh, I guess it's a little different for you. You have? Yeah, like twice. I never told you my story about the hitchhiker who like stared at me intently the whole drive and then told me that I was their brother. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we shouldn't have a sidebar now that we've only made it 30 seconds in. But also there's a part of me that's like, go on. <laughs> <laughs> holding, holding for later. <laughs> you may We're both filthy after running through the forest, making us look really suspicious. So I jumped out in front of a car to stop it. And Ilya used suggestion on the driver to make it pick us up. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We didn't ask, we told. <laughs> <laughs> Man... I never thought I'd get a ride like this. We're home, Shiro. Let's go in. Huh? We're back at my place in an instant. The sun's setting. It seems I fell asleep on the way back. What's happening with our music? <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> Maybe it's supposed to be jarring because he's like blacking out. Oh, that's fair. The sun is set by the time I make it to the living room. It's past seven o'clock already. Something's wrong. Time's passing by too fast. It was afternoon when I stepped into the house, so it's not possible for it to be night as soon as I step into the living room. Ilya... Isn't time passing by too fast? I talked to Ilya standing beside me. What an insane statement. But Ilya isn't there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ilya is... Hmm? The dinner was good, Shiro. Already in the living room, saying strange things. Dinner? Yeah, I was surprised you wanted to get energy before anything, but I'm glad we did. You were so enthusiastic while you were cooking. There are remnants of dinner on the table. There are dishes in the sink. Come to think of it, I feel pretty full. It seems I really did make dinner. That's strange. Did we have this in stock? Nope, that's why we were dropped off at the shopping district to get some groceries. I look through my memory. I access my mind palace. <laughs> well, I guess that's what happened. I see. I guess I'm talking nonsense. So we had dinner, huh? Yeah, all that's left is to rest. Mm, yeah, we rest. I'm going to go change my room. I need to talk, so please stay up. I'll be back right away. Lilia nods. I raise my hand in apology and leave the living room. And the next thing I know, I'm in my room. The instant I step out of the living room, I'm on the floor in my bedroom. Ah, ah. I wake up because of the piercing pain. A sword's pierced in my chest. That's the first thing I imagine, because my chest is hot and numb, and it feels like my life is draining out from it. <laughs> There's no sword, of course. It's just an illusion. The left side of my chest is simply rebelling against my left arm. But I finally realize my sense of time. The intermittent scenes are... I see. It's not my sense of time that's odd. It's just that my mind is screwed up. 
It's not that I have no memory. I just can't record the events into my brain. I can't hold events in my mind unless I concentrate on them. It's natural that I can't remember anything that happened after I left the forest. I can't stay conscious unless I'm in pain, like now. This is bad. I frantically grasp at my fading consciousness. Unless I consciously focus my mind, Emyashiro will disappear. Only pain or the utmost concentration can preserve my memories. In short, I have to maintain the level of concentration I had when I was trying to insert the magic circuit into my spine. I'm stumped. I can't keep this up forever and I don't know how long it'll work. Wait, that means I shouldn't sleep. Once I fall asleep, I won't be able to wake up. Once I fall asleep, Emiya Shiro will never return. Even if my body's unwounded, my mind would be scattered. I raise my body. I search through my desk. I need a small blade, something I can hide in my right hand that'll dig into my flesh if I make a <clears> fist. <throat> I can't keep with the concentration I have during training. I have to clench my fist every time I relax so the pain will keep me conscious. Oh, it's not a blade, but this might do. I find the crystal from that day. The pendant I found beside me after I was killed by Lancer. I don't know how much magical energy was originally in this, but now there's not even enough for one strengthening magic left in it. That's right. Now I can clearly think about who this pendant belongs to and who could have saved me that night. After all, she was the only other person at school that time. I don't know why she saved me, but she wouldn't need a reason to save a life. Ah! My consciousness starts to fade away. I'll think about it later. I'll fall unconscious if I think about happy things and relax. I check my condition. I release the seal on my left arm. I put the shroud back on it, but it's only there to ease my mind. According to Kodamine, the switch would be tripped if I used Archer's arm. He said there'd be nothing I could do after that. But I can still move my body. The problem is my mind, but I can stay conscious as long as I can stay awake. As for projection, I can probably project three more times using Archer's arm. I know I can manage it once. I'm scared about the second time. The third will be fatal. I think my body will self-destruct, even if my mind's still alive. I close my eyes and strain my ears. I hear creaking sounds along with my heartbeat. The thing invading my body from Archer's arm. It gets harder to suppress his reality marble the more I use his blade works. Eventually, an infinite number of blades will be created inside my body instead of outside. I don't even want to imagine what will happen. A thousand blades will pierce my body from within, killing me instantly. Don't kid me, I won't kill myself. I'm in a hopeless condition. I accept the whole situation. But I reject the facts as they stand. I won't die and I won't self-destruct. Not waking up after I fall asleep is just a product of my frightened imagination. I'll be saved. I'll be saved once I do everything I need to. It's meaningless otherwise. I said I'll protect Sakura no matter what. So I can't just die selfishly. That's right, I have to contact Tosika first. I don't have time. I'll go to her house. I'm worried about whether Kodamine's alright, but he's not my ally anymore now that we've saved Ilya. I can't ask for his help again, but the promise to... It's 
past nine o'clock. I thought I came back right away, but it's been two hours already. Sorry to keep you waiting, Ilya. I'm going to Tosca's house, so let's go together. Vin's house? I don't mind, but why? Huh? Why? We have to meet up with Tosca, and I'm worried about how she's doing. Kodamina said she'd heal by tonight, but I can't really trust him. If she's not doing well, I'll need to look after her. Okay, that's fine, but Shiro... Ilya points to the wall. Then... I'm glad to know you're worrying about me. As you can see, I'm alright. But if you were that worried about me, I wish you'd have come by my house before heading off to the forest. Tosca, when did you get here? I was here about an hour ago. I heard from Ilya what happened at the forest. Tosca's, Tosca's in a bad mood. No, she's angry. It seems she doesn't like the fact that I went to the forest without her. I can't help it. I thought I had to act as quickly as possible, and Ilya was in serious danger. Right, Ilya? Yeah, I wasn't locked up anywhere, but I could have been taken to the, Holy, the Great Holy Grail and had my heart taken out at any time. Zogan wanted to open the gate as soon as he took control of Sakura. I would be dead right now if Shiro and Kodamine had come a bit later. See, I wouldn't have made it if I waited for you. Who knows? So it all depended on Sakura, right? Tell me the truth, Ilya. Oh, you can tell? Yeah, there was a bit more time. Sakura's strong, so she won't easily break. I think there was about one more day to spare until she lost herself and fell under Zogan's control. I thought so. You shouldn't pamper Shiro too much. A little strictness is just right for him. <laughs> You're right. I'll be grateful if you see to that. The two criticize me. But if the time limit was a day, I don't think we would have made it if I waited for Tosca. I was faced with an important choice in the forest, but in exchange, I'm able to regain the time the three of us can spend together. I concentrate hard since I'm starting to relax. It seems the tension faded away during the conversation. Hold on, Ilya. You said Sakura might last one more day. Then the remaining time we have is... Half a day at most. No. No matter how hard Sakura tries, Avenger is about to be born. Once that happens, she will change completely. Nobody can save Sakura. Nobody will be saved. Avenger? Tosca and I frown at the strange word. Yes, Avenger. It's the eighth class in the Holy Grail War. It's a violation of the Ironsburn summon by breaking the rules. That's what tainted the contents of the Great Holy Grail. If the main body that assimilated was Sakura, projecting the shadow... Oh, it's the main body that assimilated with Sakura, projecting the shadow because he couldn't go into the outside world. It's something that should not exist, consuming human lives to take form. That's Avenger, an anti-hero that the Einsburn Master summoned in the Third Ritual. You know about it, Ilya? You know what that shadow is and what Sakura is possessed by? Yeah, I got the information out of Sakura, so I understand what's going on. What well, we have to do, what exactly you've made into your enemy. Ilya. Hmm. Ilya closes her eyes once. Is that resignation? Ilya sighs and then stares at us. What I'm about to talk about is the heart of the matter, and it's nothing that concerns you two. You shouldn't be burdened with this. Shiro, Rin, as you two are the last masters in the Holy Grail War, I shall tell you the truth. Ilya. Tosca looks at Ilya in surprise. I do likewise. Ilya shows calmness and emptiness, as if she's someone else. <laughs> Everything started 200 years ago. No, the journey of those who seek the Holy Grail began long before that. But 200 years ago, the ritual was begun in this land. I'll start from there. The Holy Grail, the Holy Grail grants any wish. Einsburn, Makiri, and Tosca cooperated to conduct a ritual to summon the Holy Grail. That's how the Holy Grail War came to be, a murderous battle between seven summoned servants to determine the ownership of the Holy Grail. Magi who were chosen as masters become the hosts of the servant and kill each other until only one mages remains. That's the ostensible reason for the Holy Grail War that you two know of. You don't look surprised, Rin, so you had some idea of it, huh? 
somewhat. I knew all along that I was being used, but I didn't mind it too much. I'm reaping the benefits by using somebody else's system. We're both using each other. I'm not stupid enough to get angry over something so trivial. Really? Then I don't have to explain that the order is reversed. How about you, Shiro? Do you already know that the process of making the servants fight is unnecessary? Well, I did know. Servants are summoned by the Holy Grail. The heroic spirits are summoned to determine whether the summoner deserves the Holy Grail. Once summoned, they make a contract with the master to go stay in this world and obtain the Holy Grail. Then they go out to defeat the other masters and servants. In and of itself, that's not a problem. But once I found out the defeated heroic spirits are absorbed into the Holy Grail, something felt off. Heroic spirits, servants, are only a factor in determining which master is suited for the Holy Grail. So why are they taken into the Holy Grail after their purpose has been served? So, does that mean heroic spirits are needed for the Holy Grail War and masters are just a tool to summon them? Right. In the Ritual of War, masters are mere receptors to summon the servants. Once they've done that, they can die at any time. The heroic spirits are the only ones needed to complete the Holy Grail. Heroic spirits are pure souls separate from the time axis. Though they are outside of this world's logic, they can still influence it. That's the power they needed. They tried to exit into the outer world using that power. That's the real reason of the Holy Grail in this land. Holy Grail Wars were raged to create a phenomenon, a miracle, that is still out of human reach. That's the great ritual to attain immortality that's said to have been lost by the Einsburns. Not a heroic spirit or a holy spirit, but a soul of a mere human that's fated to disappear from this world, bringing it about as an act of God. The name of the miracle is Heaven's Field. It's the golden cup that the third of the five exist. It's, ugh, it's the golden cup that's the third of the five existing sorceries. Sorceries? You mean those sorceries? The air tenses up. Ilya says that the Holy Grail is a ritual to perform a sorcery. Sorcery. A divine mystery that can't be reached with magic. An impossible phenomenon that can't be achieved by modern people. It's the ultimate goal of every magus, and those who achieve it are called sorcerers with envy and awe. There are five sorceries acknowledged by the Magic Association. As I'm not even in the association, I have no way to know, but I've heard there are five sorceries and there are about four sorcerers. Wait, so the third sorcery is the materialization of the soul? But servants are materialized souls too! No, the system does use a part of the third sorcery, but the heroic spirits are summoned. Servants aren't alive as a part of this world or time. It's too imperfect to be the third sorcery, and heroic spirits can take form in this world without the help of sorcery as long as they have a host. Heaven's Feel is not a spell that duplicates a soul perceived in the past. It's actually a spell to make an existence of a higher dimension that can take a spirit form and still influence the physical world. It takes a soul and elevates it to the next level of life. Next step. That's certainly serious, but... Even though the details are different, all sorceries are a way to reach the origin. What does it have to do with the Holy Grail? Now, first of all, there's only one administer administrated land in Japan that can activate a sorcery. I know the ley line in Fuyuki is first class, but there's not enough distortion to connect to the origin. Right. It's not distorted enough to reach the origin. That's why you make a hole. If the path is obstructed, you have to destroy the wall yourself, right? Fuck, now I know who he's talking. I have no idea who this is. Wait, We're just gonna pretend like it's fucking Ilya. Yeah. <clears throat> the Holy Grail War is the act of destroying the wall. The process accumulates enough magical energy to grant any wish, but that's just a secondary matter for the Einsburn family, and it was also an advertisement to call for the masters, the sacrifices. Astolia. The Einsburns only needed a giant magic circle that could store great amounts of magical energy without attracting the notice of the Magic Association. The head of the Tosca family at that time cooperated with them. This country doesn't receive much attention from the Association, and there aren't many first-class lands that rank next to Iwasaki's land. Buki City was almost a perfect test site, meeting all the requirements. You should be able to figure out the rest. There are two kinds of Holy Grails that govern the Holy Grail War. The Holy Grail in this land and the Holy Grail Einsburn prepares. The former is a magic circle that uses the land administrated by Tosaka. 
This is called the Great Holy Grail. The key that the Einsburn family prepares for each ritual is called the Holy Grail. The Great Holy Grail administers a system of the Holy Grail War. The Holy Grail collects the souls of the defeated heroic spirits and acts as the reactor core to activate the Great Holy Grail. And once the Holy Grail collects enough souls to activate the Great Holy Grail, it uses the heroic spirit's soul to open a hole. The Great Holy Grail fixes the small hole created when the heroic spirits return to their original place after their roles are fulfilled. This opens up the passage to the origin that humans cannot reach. Of course, this is just the first step. Your wish isn't granted even if the hole is open. The path to the origin is too far. But, the one who obtains the Holy Grail gains access to unlimited magical energy. The other side has large quantities of unused mana unlike anything seen on this side. For an ordinary magus, it's nothing short of a miracle. I see. So the Great Holy Grail is the magic circle, which serves as the foundation, and the Holy Grail is the key to activate it. The Holy Grail Wars must occur on a 50-year cycle to accumulate enough mana to summon the heroic spirits. There's no way you can carry out such a summoning with one person's magical energy. The Great Holy Grail draws mana from the land slowly so as to not deplete it, and once it's full... Yes, it summons the heroic spirits as servants. But you need an incentive to summon their heroic spirits. They won't heed your call unless you give them what they want. That's why the Holy Grail is prepared to reward them. Well, that's a deception from the start. The Einsburns just wanted the soul of the heroic spirits. They didn't care about their rank, they just wanted strong souls. To hide that fact, they created the Holy Grail War as a cover. They deceived the servants and masters and made them kill each other. Well, I guess that started from the second ritual. <laughs> the first... <laughs> The first was conducted in a foolishly honest manner and failed right away because the three families fought for its exclusive right. So the rule was made starting with the second ritual. Outsiders were called and made to fight for the Holy Grail. Masters from outside the families were just an inconvenience after the servants had been summoned, so it was more efficient to have them kill in battle. It was convenient for the three families because they could legitimately kill their collaborators. Unbelievable. So the rule for masters to kill each other exists because they couldn't decide who could see ownership by talking and had to resort to violence? Yep, but choosing the last mage's standing proved to be an even better method than expected. It's just like you. There were servants and masters that found out they were tricked, but it seems they didn't care. It's because you obtained the Holy Grail if you win. Oh, Tosca's convinced. In short, the Holy Grail War is not a battle to obtain the Holy Grail, but a ritual to escape to the outside world. Attempts to reach the outside world According to Hermeticism, there's a power that governs dimensional theory outside of this world. It's called the Swirl of the Origin. It's a coordinate that's considered to be the beginning of all things. It's the start and the end of all creation. It's the seed of God, recording everything and able to create anything. But I really don't care about that. My father would have understood what a big deal it is, but it doesn't concern me. What's possessing Sakura is much more important to me than how it all started. Elia, I don't care about the real purpose of the war. It has nothing to do with us, just like you said. More importantly, tell us about the thing you mentioned earlier. It has nothing to do with us? We're talking about sorcery here, and the third sorcery at that. It's the taboo out of all taboos that's been kept a secret even within the association. If you're a magus, you can't ignore something like this. I can. Man, what are you thinking, Tosca? This isn't the time to be talking about something that can't succeed anyway. Can't, can't, su <laughs> can't succeed? What are you basing that on? Hey now, I don't know why, but the Holy Grail War has never had a victor. That means there's something wrong with the ritual. First of all, how will you explain what's happening to Sakura? If the Holy Grail is a path to reach sorcery, does that mean Sakura is like that because of sorcery? Maybe I convince her, because she shuts her mouth. So, Ilya, why did the Holy Grail War turn out like this? Could it mean I said there's something in the Holy Grail? So is this that Avenger thing, and he's not in the Holy Grail, Sakura or Ilya, but in the magic circle you called the Great Holy Grail? Oh, could it mean he would know, wouldn't he? It's a mage tainted by Avenger, just like Sakura. Oh, he's a mage tainted by Avenger, just like Sakura. He already knows what's inside the Holy Grail. Huh? Kira and Sakura are the same? That's right, this concerns you two. 
This is about what Zokin's trying to obtain, what's changing Sakura, what's hiding in the Holy Grail, and what's tainting the souls of the heroic spirits. Its class name is Avenger. The heroic spirit that's about to take a living form through the power of the Holy Grail is a successful example of the third sorcery. What? What, what was all that about sorceries not having to do with this? It does concern them. No, Avenger's materialization isn't a sorcery carried out by the Holy Grail. From the start, it is a heroic spirit with that specific attribute. It can take form within the Holy Grail because it's Avenger. The Holy Grail merely summoned an Avenger that can use the third sorcery, so it doesn't mean that the Great Holy Grail used the third sorcery. <laughs> so, in sh oh. so in short, it's a monster that can materialize? It's someone who can embody the third sorcery even if the Great Holy Grail doesn't? Yes, it all started during the third ritual. The first one was a failure. Einsburn was defeated quickly in the second war, and in desperation they summoned a spirit that specialized in killing. They used an old scripture, a foreign folklore they obtained, as catalyst to summon the worst evil possible. They summoned what they shouldn't have summoned to kill all the other masters, to activate the Great Holy Grail, and to keep all the achievement to themselves. The spirit's name is Angra Mainyu, a murderous anti-hero that embodies every curse in this world. Angra Mainyu? Hold on. Angra Mainyu is the name of the ancient Persian devil. It's the embodiment of evil, the greatest devil in Zoroastrianism. It fights a 9,000 year battle against Ahura Mazda, protector of human goodness. Zoroastrianism is a story mainly about the battle between these two gods. It's the first religion to come up with the doctrine of duality, the angels and the devil. But the story contains no hero named Angra Mainyu. First of all, how can someone crowned with the name of the king of devils become a heroic spirit? That's not possible, Ilya. The Holy Grail can only call on heroic spirits, and you don't need the Holy Grail if you can reproduce phenomena on the divine spirit level. No, first of all, there can't be a heroic spirit with the name Angra Mainyu. Even if there was, it would be a nameless evil spirit that left no mark on history. Even if it were summoned, its soul wouldn't be compatible with the Holy Grail. Ilya, what did the Einsburn's master summon? I said Angra Mainyu, Rin. He was certainly nameless and not a devil, but a hero with the name Angra Mainyu does exist. Did exist. <laughs> Every time this this soundtrack comes up, I know I'm about to fucking monologue the fuck out of it. <laughs> yeah. It's like Kodamine all over again. But this time it's a child voice. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the story takes place a long time ago, insanely long ago, in a very small world. It was a hero that lived in a small nameless village. <laughs> I put her in the background! <laughs> I don't know how distorted their doctrine was. I don't know what led them to that idea, but they lived clearly and righteously in accordance with their precepts. People are supposed to value goodness, protect the light, and live virtuous lives. For these people, segregated from the rest of the world, the supplication was absolute. It was probably the only source of human pride that they knew. Yes. The people in the village earnestly wished for everyone to live in peace, so everyone could be free from malice and live pure, upright lives. They renounced such human concerns as hunger, conflict, love, and hate. They were proud to be worthy of God's blessing, but it was impossible. People can't be freed from malice just through clean, righteous living. From the moment we are born, there is evil in us. You must take certain measures if you want to separate evil from yourself. And those measures were taken. They came up with a way to save not just their small village, but the whole world. It's hard to make everyone do good, but you can prove everyone's goodness. You just need one person. If one person embodies all the evils of the world, the rest of the people cannot be evil, no matter what. They seriously believed in such a simple, childlike theory. And one young man was chosen as a sacrifice. They captured him, carved every curse word onto his body, forced every sin imaginable upon him, and held him responsible for all evils in the world. That's all. A small world, but an ultimately evil, was born in this one complete world. The people cursed, scorned, feared, yet adored this man. They believed they were pure and righteous since all the world's evil was within him. They seriously believed it'd save everyone in the world and created a devil. To demonstrate human goodness, they continuously tortured one man until he went insane. No, they would not allow him to die until he succumbed to old age. The name of the devil that corrupts men. He was given the name Angra Mainyu and was irrationally hated by everyone in the world. 
I don't know if he really did turn into a devil during the process, but everyone in his village believed him to be so, and they treated him accordingly. They hated and feared him, but he was the proof of their goodness. They revered him as the sign of their salvation. He was the object of everyone's hate, but he saved people. His existence pardoned every one of their evil deeds. Though his method was unusual, he still saved people. He became a hero for the villagers. And a hero was born, hated by people, losing his self. Someone who transformed into exactly what they wanted. A helpless sacrifice that came to represent all the world's evil. That's the anti-hero, Angra Mainyu. An ordinary person without any special talent that was determined to be all evils of the world. The king of devils that approves of all six billion evils in Zoroastrianism. He's a curse made by a concept of ancient people. A little history lesson for you. I just love how casually everyone knows about Zoroastrianism. <laughs> Yeah, it's like definitely a thing you're supposed to learn in school, but like you catch it once in middle school and forget about it for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I knew about it. Of course you did. <laughs> it's just in school you use it as an example of the first uh, like heaven versus hell religion. Mm -hmm. It's the first dichotomous. Yeah. Anyway. Ilya finishes her story with no sign of bitterness or contempt. Antihero. Katamina introduced me to the term when the war started. But if Ilya's story is true, the guy who turned into Angra Mainyu is still burdened with all the sins. It's because that's his reason of existence. A heroic spirit who's had six billion sins pushed onto him. If a guy like that's summoned, all that'll happen is a big massacre. It'd be only natural for him to hate people, and first of all, everyone around him established him to be evil. I'll remind you. So the man is using Sakura to take revenge on the people. No, to carry out the role people pushed onto him? So, I understand the story of Avenger, I'll remind you. But why is he in the Holy Grail? He's just an ordinary person, right? Even if he's given a devil's name and treated like one, he's still just a human. That wouldn't turn him into a monster capable of eating the entire town. Yeah, Anger by is human. He was just an ordinary man, but was forced to become a heroic spirit, so there wasn't any problem originally. The Ironsburn family summoned Anger Mainyu in the Third War, but the summoned heroic spirit was weak. The anti-hero was defeated in the early stage of the war, and the Holy Grail took him in. The Master of Ironsburn grieved how this ordinary human could be a devil that destroys the human world. Yes, the heroic spirit was merely human. A human that cursed the world. A human who everyone wanted to represent their evil. So he had no power. He was merely constructed by the people around him. But everything reversed the instant he was taken in by the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail grants wishes. When defeated, servants are reduced to raw magical energy and are taken in by the Holy Grail to await their release. They lose their individual personalities and stay in the Holy Grail as an omnipotent power. But Anger Mainyu was different. He was a heroic spirit that others wished for. He was intended to be evil, regardless of his personality. No way, could he? Yes, the Holy Grail grants every wish. He was a mere human, but wasn't treated as one, so he was an embodiment of people's wishes. So the instant Anger Mainyu was taken in by the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail accepted a wish. An existence that should not be. The heroic spirit, constructed from people's selfish wishes, was finally given flesh within the wish-granting Holy Grail. Five hundred years under the Makiri and a thousand under the Einsburn are nothing. After all, he's an ideal human that has been wished for since the Age of Gods, over two thousand years ago. That's what the shadow is, and finally obtained form as a heroic spirit. Anger Mainu used servants' colorless magical energy to embody all evils of the world, wanting only to be evil. Has slowly matured with an ability to curse all six billion people. And what, the contents of the Holy Grail have already been tainted by him? The wish the Holy Grail grants is already determined and the fourth war took place only to store up the magical energy needed to give him form? Yes, I don't know how much Kiritsugu knew about the servant called Angra Mainyu, but believing the shadow leaking from it to be dangerous, he destroyed the Holy Grail. And his course of action was right. No matter what the previous Angra Mainyu was, the Angra Mainyu that formed inside the Holy Grail is real. It will become the greatest evil in the world, a devil that will kill every human being alive. But thanks to Kiritsugu's resolve, Anger Mainyu was left unborn within the Great Holy Grail. Konamide and Sakura received parts of it. Zogen must have known that a servant was about to be born in the Holy Grail. That's why he implanted a piece of it in Sakura, creating a link between her and that servant. He made Sakura a master so that she can control the servant once it emerges. 
No matter. Ooh, ooh, we almost didn't make the jump. Okay, we're fine. No matter what Anker Bind you is, it's still a servant. No servant, no matter how strong, can disobey his master. Ooh. That's Sogit's plan. He wants to use Sakura to obtain Anger Mind you. Hold on. Does that mean Sakura has a contract with his servant, Avenger? Are you serious? Even if Sakura controls Anger Mind you that way, she can't resist the taint of the magical energy. She's already changed that much when Angra Mainyu is still inside the Holy Grail, so her personality will disappear completely once it comes out, then being a master won't matter. That's fine. Zokin isn't worried about Sakura's personality. What matters to him is her body and its connection to Angra Mainyu. He's planning to take over her empty body after her personality disappears. I don't think you know, but Zokin can take over anyone's body as long as the worm bearing his soul exists. That's how he stayed alive until now. From the start, Sakura was just a body to eventually possess. Then what? The things possessing Sakura. If what's changing her is a contract with a servant. Zokin kidnapped me, probably because he didn't want to let Sakura open the gate. He wanted me to take the role of the Holy Grail, allowing him to take over Sakura's body when she became Anger Mainyu's master. I guess he plans to take over Anger Mainyu in time, since the soul given flesh is a living example of the third sorcery. It's like tainting a perfect god with one's own human desires. The definition of God's creation. It's something that's made from people's wishes, but not affected by people's intentions. Well, I bet any god will turn into a devil if it reflects Zokin's personality. That must be why Kodamine considered him his enemy. I get it. That's enough, right, Shiro? Huh? Tuska's voice brings me back to the present. It's not, huh? We know our enemy and we know Zokin's intention. Then we don't even need to talk about the rest. We don't even need to talk about the rest, huh? She's right. What's in the Holy Grail? The disaster from ten years ago will be repeated if he comes out. No, that's an understatement. He'll kill countless people if we let him be. Yes. Sakura's creation will take many lives. I can't allow that. Then I have to stop it. I have to make whatever sacrifices I can to keep Sakura from being burdened with more deaths. Stop, Angra you. I have to end the war before he emerges from the Holy Grail. I guess you understand now. We have to fight and win. And there are only two ways to do this. Kill Sakura, Angra Mainyu's master, before he comes out. Or destroy the Great Holy Grail before he comes out. The former is the more certain method. Sakura and Zokin will surely get in our way if we try to destroy the Great Holy Grail. We won't be able to do it without defeating them. So it's easiest to defeat Sakura. Yeah, fight Sakura and separate her from Anger Mainyu. That's the easiest way, and the plan's easy to understand. Fuck! Oh. I see now. Yeah, fight Sakura and separate her from Anger Mainyu. That's the easiest way, and the plan's easy to understand. Oh? You have no problem with going after her? That's the only thing we can manage right now. If Anger Mind you is what Ilya says it is, it's not something humans can match. We lose the instant it comes out. Then we have to take the quickest and surest route. More importantly, Tosca, I don't mind fighting, but do you know where Sakura is? That's not a problem. If Ilya's right, there's only one place the Great Holy Grail can be. Right, Ilya? Yes, you're right, Rin. Anger Mainyu is about to be born, so Zokin is at the Great Holy Grail, the degraded ley line, the origin that was chosen by the three families 200 years ago. Anger Mainyu is being conceived in the large cavern underneath the Ryoto Temple. Hmm. Under the Ryoto Temple? That's where Sakura is. That's where we'll be heading, the place where the Holy Grail War will end. 
I take a deep breath and allow my tense mind to relax slightly. The cold pendant in my hand settles my thoughts. Fighting Sakura. Tosca isn't lying. It's just that our methods are different. Tosca must intend to finish the war by killing Sakura. But I'll end the war by saving Sakura's life. My body trembles. The house is beset by pressure, making the air feel like water. And... Sakura... The instant we realize the pressure is coming from the shadow, we run out into the yard. We go out into the yard. The whole world is covered by the shadow. My entire body is numb with fear. The black shadow is standing in front of us. It can crush this house if it wants to. The difference in our power is obvious. It is transfigured to an existence that's unlike anything I've ever seen. The black shadow does nothing. It's not Sakura, but a shadow shaped like her. The real Sakura is under the Rito temple. The thing in front of us is a virtual image. Hmm. So you're sending the shadow instead of showing up yourself? You've gotten arrogant during the short time you've been away. Does she not hear Tosca's provocation, or does she not hear anything at all? Wavering in the moonlight, her shadow looks lonely. Her eyes look at me. Senpai. <laughs> Weak, as if she'll reply like always if I just reach out. But I don't. What I must do is determined. I can't say anything to her, as doing so would weaken my resolve. She looks away. After hanging her head for a moment. Did you hear the whole story from Iliasville, Naysan? She confronts Tosca with a cold voice. Yeah, I heard about what's possessing you and the abilities of what's about to be born from the Holy Grail. So, Sakura, let me ask. Do you have any intention of cutting ties with Anger Mind you? Tosca's voice is the same. Completely cold, showing no concern for Sakura. No. I said the weak me disappeared, didn't I? I was able to obtain this power, so I don't intend to let it go. I couldn't even if I wanted to. This is how Mato Sakura has to live from now on. I see. Then one more thing. How complete is the servant you're boasting about? Ilya said it's coming out soon, but what do you have to say as the mother? Is it already born? Of course not. When that happens, this town will be consumed in a second. I can't allow that. Senpai's still here. So I won't let him out as long as I still exist. Oh, so there's no reason for us to hurry, huh? So you're going to keep Anger Mind you inside as long as Shiro's with me? That's good, Shiro. Sakura seems well enough. Don't be ridiculous. You should know how much longer I'm going to last. Please run away with Senpai. I won't last long. I don't know when I'll disappear. I would only be able to hold up for one more night. So I'm warning you before that. So I'm warning you before that. Nason, please take Senpai and run far away. Then I can be at peace and take his life with mine. Sakura says she's going to kill him using her life. Tosuka trembles a bit. Is that because she believes her, or...? <sighs> you don't know when you're going to disappear, huh? You're wrong. You just don't know when you'll run out of patience. Son. Oh well, I don't know how you're going to kill Anger Mind you, but you can kill yourself without hesitation if I run away with Shiro. He'll kill the servant within the Holy Grail along with you, right? Yes, so please run away. I don't want to see you to see me change. It's fine as long as Senpai gets away. So please don't come after me anymore, Senpai. She's desperately begging us. Sakura's shadow can kill us right now, but it asks for salvation by letting us go. But I can't answer her wish. I can't leave Sakura and run away, nor can I let her kill herself along with Angra Mainyu. And... We'll go there. We'll go and kill you for sure. 
Tosca breaks away from her sister. What? What did you expect? As Tosca's magus, I can't ignore you, and I can't believe you even if you say you'll kill yourself. Don't you get it, Sakura? You're not making any sense. You want to kill, but you're telling me to run. Jeez, you're trying to act like a good girl because you're in front of Shiro. What? Oh, you can't make a good face. That's what you should have done from the start. So is that all? Then get lost. You don't have to hurry since we'll go see you right away. Look, Sakura, I'll kill you with my own hands. Tosca declares with voice that even contains kindness. The shadow wavers. After freezing on the spot like a statue. Yes, I'll be waiting for you, Nason. It smiles violently and disappears. The shadow covering the house recedes. Tosca and I are the only ones remaining in the yard. I get dizzy. I thought I was concentrating, but it seems I was agitated after seeing Sakura's image. It seems Sakura's not the only one that's running out of time. Shiro? You heard what Sakura said, but what are you going to do? If you want to run, I won't stop you. But if you do, that'll be after you project the gem sword. You don't have to confirm with me. I won't run away, and I'll somehow project the gem sword. We're cooperating, right? Then I'll follow up by doing things you can't do. I see. That's good. But do you understand, Shiro? Coming with me means killing Sakura. The same goes for the gem sword. You're going to prepare a weapon that I will use to kill her. Yeah. The gem sword thing's contradictory, but Sakura is out of our control, and projecting the sword is a promise we made. If projecting the sword means we can match Sakura's shadow, then it's something we definitely need to do. Oh, so? Yeah, I'm taking the opposite measure. I'm going to end this war by saving Sakura. I've decided to be Sakura's superhero. Even if letting Sakura live means killing everyone else? We don't know that yet. There should be a way to save Sakura and not let there be any more victims. I don't know about that. Sakura's already killed many people. Is it justice for you to save such a person, Shiro? Her inquiry is decisive. A sin I can't talk myself out of. She puts it into words and I finally... That's right. I'll protect her even if she's not human. I'm going to protect her from everything, including the part of her that wants to kill herself. That's all I wanted to do. That's what it means to be someone's ally, right? I'm able to tell her what I think. Jeez, you really can just come out and say it. I nod back, feeling no shame. I see. Well, I knew there was no point in arguing with you, but I didn't think it'd go this far. You beat me. Huh? Where are you going, Tosca? I have to go prepare for the battle. Sakura gave us that warning because she really doesn't have time to spare, so I have to get ready quickly. That's true, but we were talking... We're done talking now. In short, you're going to save Sakura as long as you're still alive, right? <sighs> Fine. So do as you want. I'm not going to say anything now. Go struggle to your heart's content. Hmm? Where'd her nervousness go? Tosca looks angry now. But don't get me wrong, this is an exchange for making the gem sword. I'll leave you in charge of Sakura as long as you're trying. I won't do anything until you can't move anymore. That's good, right? You might be able to save Sakura if you try hard enough. Tosca leaves with that. The uneasiness in my chest goes away. We're thinking oppositely. But Tosca still wants to save Sakura. Then I can entrust her with Sakura. We both like her. And then Tosca should be able to save Sakura. It's 10 o'clock. Tosca said we'll prepare for battle and go to the Ryudo Temple before the date changes. Well, I'm going to have you project the gem sword, but how do you feel? Can you project it while suppressing Archer's arm? Oh. I see. Ilya hasn't told her how I took the shroud off. Well, um, yeah. 
Oh, that's good to hear. Then the rest is up to Shiro and Ilya. The Azoth Sword, which is as close as we're getting going to get to the Gem Sword. Shiro's projection, and Ilya's support. We may not be able to replicate it, but if it all goes well, we should at least be able to reproduce half of its original ability. Tosuka hands me a dagger. Oh, remember when we punched that thing into Kodamine's chest? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was sick. The dagger is a ritualistic equipment. It might be something she favors, as it looks well used. Not only that, even an amateur like me can feel how much magical energy is stored in this thing. Well, this is nothing compared to the shadow, but it's still a hundred times more than my magical energy capacity. This is amazing. You had something like this up your sleeve? Of course it's amazing. I used all the jewels I had, which contained ten years worth of magical energy. Tosca still looks like she didn't want to use them. She seems generous, but maybe she's really stingy when it comes to money. Well, with that aside. <laughs> hmm, but is that really okay, Tosca? You don't have any left for yourself if you use everything you have, right? I know you're still not fully recovered, so can you still fight? Well, I can manage to move around, but I haven't healed to the point where I can use magic again. Wait, then... You don't need to worry. It's fine as long as you can project the gem, sh ugh, the gem sword. The sword has absurd power said to have even stopped the falling moon. What? I, I don't get what she means, but Tosca's great confidence. <laughs> well, if she's so sure of herself, I won't worry either. Let's start, Shiro. I'll take a long it'll take a long time to project that sword, even for you. We have to get started or the date will change. Uh oh. Right, that was probably the rat. You're right. Then let's go back to your room. If we're not someplace where you can relax, our chances are lower. Hi, Nick. Tosca heads back to the living room. Oh, hold on. I'll do the projection in the shed. And I want to be alone with Ilya while I do it, so can you wait in your room? Why? I haven't been there in case something happens. I have to be there in case something happens, right? Ilya, right? Oh, did she close her eyes? Yeah. There's no need. It's a bother if you're here. Shiro gets distracted easily, so he might fail if you fall and get his attention when it counts the most. Hey, that's rude, Ilya. Tosca complains with a sour look. She's not arguing back, maybe because she can't deny the possibility that she'll screw up at a crucial moment. Alright, then I'll wait outside the shed. Is that alright, Ilya? I guess it can't be helped. That's the biggest compromise we can make. Ren, don't come in until I tell you to if you want us to reproduce the gem sword. I'll call for you if something's about to happen, so please stay outside until no then, no matter what. You're being persistent. I said I understand. I won't come in even if I hear Shiro scream. It doesn't really matter, but I wish she'd picked a better example. <laughs> well, let's go, Shiro. Ilya goes into the shed. I decide to ask Tosca something before I follow. Tosca, can I have the sword? You're going to be projecting using that. The Azoth sword will go away once the gem sword's projected. Yeah. You can have the gem sword, so can I have this in return? See, this might break if I fail. I can't concentrate thinking how you might get angry if I break this. Oh, geez, fine. You can have the Azo sword if that'll help you relax. <laughs> He's like, I need to not have guilt working <laughs> into this. So if you could just tell me it's mine real quick. <laughs> Thanks. Then I'm going to do my best. I shut the door. I can't let Tosca see this. I'm sure she won't stop me now, but she'll definitely feel responsible. If I'm to smooth this out, I have to tell her I used it after everything's over and get retroactive approval. The best kind. Are you ready, Shiro? You've released Archer's arm already, so I don't need to explain the steps, right? 
I nod. Ilya tells me to sit down, and I do so. But, Ilya, I can only project what I've seen or what Archer made. I have no information on the gem sword. I can't project it, even if we have a blueprint and a dagger that's just like it. I know. It'll first have you come inside... Oh. I'll first have you come inside my memory. <laughs> I'm sorry. Me. I know. I'll first have you come inside my memory. I haven't seen it either, but the record of the gem sword is in me. Tosco's great master was there when the great holy grail was made. I'm sure the sword was there at that time. Whoa, Ilya. Just close your eyes. I'll keep your body here and send your mind somewhere else. We did this before. I'll send your vision into my memory, so analyze the gem sword there. I'll release your left arm once you're inside. You'll be hit by the pressure of 200 years and the invasion from your arm at the same time. Brace yourself and try to finish the projection as fast as you can. Good luck. Yeah. Ilya's voice is trembling. Her arms are as well. I'll take you to the gem sword, so you just need to hold your breath, clear your mind, and don't look at anything unnecessary. You just need to draw out his Zelrich. My space splits. Is it because all my senses are within her memory? Or is it because my left arm is released? There's no pain. The cognition of pain doesn't matter now. I'm swallowed by my injury. I'm falling into a swirling maelstrom of pain. I don't know where I am. I don't know who I am. I don't know what it means. It's a large circuit. Multi-layered crests are carved on a bare rock that's over 50 meters in radius. It's like a large observatory, rotating by itself in the deserts of Arizona. The circuits cover the area in many layers. The geometric figures turn in place. A white girl stands in the center of the beautiful spider's nest. Her name is Justice. Justice Lizrich von Eisburn. She's the magus that devised the Holy Grail War. The great magus who was called the Winter Saint. A magus accompanied by Makiri Zokin and Tosuka Nagato. The great Holy Grail is activated. Justice becomes the key, reenacting the ancient sorcery. Yes, the Holy Grail is just a Holy Grail without her. Her will is needed for Heaven's feel. The old man knows as well as Makiri and Tosuka do that do that the Holy Grail is a mere wish bringer. My vision narrows. The world expands. I concentrated on something needless. I did, so my body was ripped in half. The world is too big for this small body. I'll eventually see nothing. The process behind this 200 year old ritual doesn't matter. There's only one thing I need to look at. I concentrate on the man standing in front of the Great Holy Grail. I concentrate on the dagger in his hand. That's the original. A ritual dagger with a jeweled blade. The kaleidoscopic gleam sears through my eyes and into my brain. I understand the instant I see it. I understand that I can't comprehend it. All I can imitate is the shape. I can't analyze the structure and project it. What kind of a magical theory was it constructed with? The old man's dagger is still a mystery, even if I use Archer's arm and every last piece of knowledge in heroic spirit Emia. It's alien technology. The old man is embodying general knowledge from a far future, beyond the reach of modern man. <laughs> I'm repelled. I can't be repelled. I can't reach it. Not reaching is unforgivable. 
I reach out. I reach out. I reach out. My eyes are burned out. My brains are burned out. I extend my left arm for dozens of meters. Extend, extend, extend. Stop! Come back, Shiro! I hear Ilya's voice. But I'm not there yet. I don't even have my fingertips on it. I can't back out now. How can I back out after seeing that miracle, the ultimate one? Give up! Do you want to disappear, Shiro? Get there. Get there. Get there. Get there. Ah. Ah. <coughs> Shiro. Did I jump myself or was I pushed back by something? I'm flying. They land on my back. My left arm. Pain. My tongue. My fingers. The trembling won't. Stay! I'll shroud! A big knife stabs me from the side. It's so uncomfortable that I repel the one wielding it. Oh, was she talking. the one that said ouch? Oh, ouch! And I realized I just punched Ilya. Uh, I'm sorry, Ilya, I... She pats dust off herself and gets up. Good, she's not hurt. I told you not to look at unnecessary things, you idiot! Jeez, I'll let you off the hook this time since it paid off, but I won't forgive you if you disobey me again! She points at my face as she scolds me. Wait. I'm feeling something hard in my left hand, I look down. I managed to project it. It's projected, but it doesn't seem like the one I saw. First of all, I don't feel any magical energy in this thing. Tuska's Azoth sword is many times better than this, and this blade wouldn't cut paper. Yep, I have a lot to complain about, but thanks for your hard work, Shiro. Your projection was perfect. You showed me a flawless blade works. Uh, I don't know, but is this any good? It looks pretty crappy. That's fine as is. The sword is an extraordinary demonic sword that can only be used by Schweinorg's lineage. Well, I guess it's fate. Sakura is receiving the protection of the third and Rin's going to try to use the second. It wouldn't end up as a mere investigation if the association were here. Every department would be running to put them on trial. Ilya laughs. <laughs> wow, so this dagger's that amazing? Yeah, to be more accurate, it's a multi-dimensional refractory phenomenon. Gem sword, Kisher Zelrich Schweinark. Sh it's called Gem Sword Zelrich, and it's the old mage's favorite sword in Tosca's heirloom. But the sword wasn't passed down the Tosca line, just the blueprint. It's an assignment from the sorcerer that the Tosca Magi must pursue for a long, long time. Assignment from sorcerer? Wait, the great master Tosca was talking about is a sorcerer? Yeah, but Zelrich is an oddball along, among the sorcerers in that he still associates himself with this world, so I'm sure he has other apprentices. I don't think Zelrich is in this world, but he might show up once Rin's capable of making the gem sword by herself. Hmm? He's not in this world, but might appear all of a sudden? Isn't he just a wanderer that likes to travel? Whoa. I let my guard down. I get dizzy. I clench my right fist, feel the pendant digging into my torn flesh, and keep my consciousness. I steady my breathing so Ilya doesn't notice. My limbs. I still feel my limbs. Good. I thought I'd lose something if I used projection, but I'm not missing anything yet. My head's still working. The biggest proof is that I can check on my condition. I should be able to use one more projection. No, I have to use it. 
I have to save Sakura in a way different from Tosaka. Archer's arm will make it pass. Mm, Rin? Yeah. Yeah. So, means, in short, the sorcery parallel worlds. So his nickname, Kaleidoscope. Tosca? I can't understand her. It's not that I can't hear her. She's just speaking in a language I don't understand. She's take talking in some strange language and holding something dangerous in her left hand. Tosca's holding a sword I've never seen before. Never seen before. That can't be. I projected, I think, that sword just now, and my left hand is empty, so it must mean I handed it to Tosca. Shiro? From? Was the projection? I get a chill. My memory is vague. I can't recall anything. My understanding and the details don't match up. Gah. I clench my right hand. My eyes finally focus in exchange for dripping blood. Um, Tosca. I get up. My limbs are light compared to my disconnected head. They're so light that I think they may be empty inside. It's not Tosca. Illy and I will go test it out, so you should rest. Wait, what's with your hand? Tosca grabs me. Her speed is surprisingly slow, but... <laughs> Why do you have this? My mind isn't working, and she has a hold of my hand before I know it. Tosca's looking at the pendant in my palm with astonishment. I don't know why she's surprised. But I have this because... Shiro, why do you have this? And are you crazy holding it this tight? Why? I just have it as a charm. This is something I picked up. Why did I pick it up? It's something I shouldn't forget, but I can't remember. But the stranger in my left arm knows what it is better than I do. Um, it's something important. I have to have it on me until the end. Words that are not mine come out of my mouth. Shiro, I also have that pendant. Huh? Tosca takes out a pendant from her pocket. It's certainly the same. It's a simple design for a jewel user like Tosca, but I think something simple like this brings out her beauty. Wow, they're the same. I nod back. No, mine's empty, but there's still a bit left in yours. It's not significant, but I'm sure there's a meaning behind the usage of it. Keep that. It might come in handy. Tosca puts her pendant away and walks off with Ilya. Hey, Tosca, where are you going? I need to talk to Ilya. I'll let you rest for an hour, so stay in your room. And I'll get seriously mad if you don't treat your hand right away. Tosca's bad temper borders on outright hostility. She takes Ilya, who follows her without a word. Oh, well, I guess I'm saved. <laughs> I have to find out what happened to me before I start moving around. But I'm still conscious. I can figure out the situation if I don't let my guard down. So, why am I here? I think about why I'm here in the shed. Sakura's warning. Sakura warned us to run, and Tosca said she'd fight. Then, that's right, we have to go beneath the Rigido Temple. So, why am I lying in the shed when we have to go to the Rigido Temple? I'm on the ground. I realize that I'm inside the shed. My right hand is hurting. Thanks to that, my consciousness is back. Damn, pull yourself together, idiot. I get up and check how my limbs are doing. Don't lose spirit. 
I'm certainly losing something at hopeless speed. But it's not fatal. At the very least, I should be able to fight normally until the day dawns. Uh, who fucking knows? Is Ryder still alive? She should be alive. Yeah, okay. You look terrible. Do you recognize me, Shiro? I quickly turn around. In the back of the shed, shrouded in darkness just beyond the moon's reach, there stands a servant in black. Ryder, you... Yes, I was watching you. My mission is to protect you, but Sakura is my master. So long as she is the one trying to harm you, I can offer you no assistance. That is why I did not help you in the forest. It was your own fault to be attacked by Berserker. Ryder explains lightly. She speaks without emotion. It seems she was waiting for me to be alone. I see. Then you came here to... To kill you. You and your allies are Sakura's enemies. Thus, I cannot let you meet her. Ryder's holding a nail-like dagger. I feel her hostility creeping up my spine. Ryder's serious. I... Ooh! We haven't made a fucking decision in so long. Holy shit. I feel like we can talk her down. I think if we fight back using projection, we fucking die. Uh, because projection is going to make us explode. Right, because we're not trying to kill her. Right. Even even Tosca was like, "Yeah, man, fine, fuck it. We'll 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 it'll be a last resort." Right. Escape out of the shed. I feel like running from riders just a dumb call, right? Servant speed. Yeah, I feel like we can talk her down. Yeah, 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 yeah. we are in agreement. Watch us get fucking decapitated here. Got the last time she stabbed us through the fucking arm, man. I'm, I think we're good. <laughs> she once asked me. What was it? Remember? It was... Oh, I think it's Sakura's side till the very end. That's right. She asked me under the starry sky if I'll be on Sakura's side until the very end. The words I couldn't say to her back then, I can tell her now with confidence. Ryder, I understand how much you care for Sakura. You're stopping me now because Sakura will suffer if you let me go, right? Yes. Are you still going to kill Sakura in spite of that? I'm not going to kill her. I'm going to save her. Ryder, I'm going to protect Sakura until the very end. I'm going to choose Sakura no matter what. So, please lend me your power. Tosuka and I can't do this alone. If you care for Sakura, please help us. Is that your answer to my question from the other day? I nod. Very well. But I will not fight unless there's a chance to win. What do you expect of me, Shiro? What I expect from Ryder? There's only one thing. Ryder's the only one out of all the servants that can oppose Saber's noble phantasm. Sakura's strongest card. I have some questions before that. Can you still use your noble phantasm? Yes, Sakura still supplies me with magical energy. Right, next question. Are servants still spirits even if they take physical form? So you can't hurt them with normal weapons? Let's see. A normal servant will be able to nullify them, but those consumed by Sakura are another matter. Having received bodies from Sakura, they cannot return to spiritual form. Strong magical weapons should be able to penetrate through their shadows. I see. That is decided. There's a chance of victory and the rolls are clear. Ryder, I want you to beat Saber one-on-one. -on -one, to be specific. 
I whisper in her ear. I know nobody's listening, but I'm just making sure the audience doesn't hear. <laughs> I see. I can definitely penetrate her guard with that. It is a pure contest of power. Nothing is left to chance. Right? Well, if there's a problem... It is your skill and my trust in you. I nod. Ryder puts a finger to her mouth, thinking. Fair enough. I shall trust you and accept you as my temporary master. And agrees with a smile that takes me by surprise. <clears throat> the clock strikes midnight. It's 12 o'clock, the promised time. I wrap the Azoth sword with cloth and tuck it under my arm. This is my only weapon. The only other thing I'm taking is the pendant. Wait, he still has the Azoth sword? I thought, didn't Rin say he was going to disappear? Yeah, that's what I'm confused oh, about. Oh, Rin doesn't know that we undid Archer's arm. Yes. So she doesn't know that we can pull shit out of thin air. Like. Oh, she doesn't know that we can just project whenever we feel like it. Like excessive shit, right? Yeah. Um... And so she thinks that we had to turn the sword into the Zalrich sword. Oh, but in reality, oh right, because they did all that prep work, and we're like, "You don't need to do all this." And she's like, "Yeah, we do." And you're like, mm, "You don't understand my magic." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cheryl, Rin's calling for you. She's waiting outside, so she wants to meet up there as soon as you're ready. Ilya's going to stay here. It's partly because Zokin's after her, but I'm also having her stay here because she's my hope. I see. So she's out here, huh? There. Yeah, she looked like she wanted you to come quickly, so she'll probably scold you again if you don't hurry. I wonder... I don't know if there's going to be another day cut off before, like, the end of the game. Oh, good night, Potra. Thanks for coming by. Good to see you, buddy. Are you trying to stop right now? No, not necessarily. I am just thinking out loud about that. We have 30 minutes to see where we get. I'm not saying it's stop right now. Why, don't be mad. <laughs> I'm not mad. I was... You almost started this conversation then stopped it and then immediately brought it up six six pages later. <laughs> I, we had a, I don't know. I There was a blank line and I was thinking about. <laughs> We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. I nod and get up. There's no pain in my left arm now. It's just that my human functionality is eroding. I can't tell what I'm doing if I stand still. Then I'm going. Be careful, Ilya. See you, Shiro. Please come home with Sakura and Rin before the day breaks. I wave goodbye to her and leave. The house is dead quiet. Ten years. Many things have happened here, and I have a lot of memories. This just happened recently. A morning scene that was part of my life for a year and a half. The shed is dead quiet. It's my small workshop that I frequented like my room. Here I trained hard every night, hoping to be like Kiritsugu. She'd wake me up from time to time when I slept in. It feels like it happened long ago, but I even remember how the air smelled. The room is dead quiet. A room that was only used for the past couple days. I don't have many memories here. Only Sakura comes to mind. Man. I sigh and lean against the wall. I can't remember. I can't remember what happened in this house or all the things I did. But still. 
Sakura's face comes to mind just by walking to these places. Wow, I... She really means a lot to me. My consciousness is fading and my memory is a mess. The ten years in this house are ambiguous in my head. But I can still remember. I can clearly remember Sakura no matter what part of me goes away. I take a deep breath. What must be done has been determined from the start. Alright, let's go, Sakura. Taking a firm grip of my consciousness, I leave Sakura's room. There's nothing left. We once made a promise here. We knew it wouldn't come true, but we encouraged each other. I'll do it again now. What was that small hope used for? Well, no. Now is this the point you want to stop? 